Hi guys, so I've been getting a lot of questions, people asking me how I was able to mouth all of the words that um, Michelle uh, said in the movie, but I just wanted to clarify and let people know that I did the voice myself. That was a big part of booking the role for me, you know, stepping outside of myself and just transforming myself to become Michelle. So just wanted to clear that up for you guys that it was me and yeah. I'm so grateful, and I can't wait for you guys to see it on Saturday, Lifetime at 8 p.m. Shameless plug. What's up, y'all? This is your girl, Star J Craziness, and I'm coming to you with a review on Surviving Compton, Dr. Dre, and Suge Knight. Now, I'm really, really, really upset at Dr. Dre. A.K. He ain't even going. He don't even deserve his name. He's an unknown specimen. Okay, that's what he is. An unknown specimen. Because he. Oh my gosh. Not only did I see the movie that Lifetime did an awesome job on. The best biopic I have ever seen on Lifetime. Because you know we had Aaliyah. They definitely dropped the ball on that one. We had Whitney Houston. We had Tony Braxton. But Michelle Laybite, excellent job. Let me just say that. Congrats to y'all on that one. But, um, Mr. Unknown Specimen. <sighs> Woo-hoo. Gee. Mm. Lord. Mm-mm. Couldn't have been me. Couldn't have been me. But I do want to applaud Michelle Lay for sharing um her story with us sharing her truth you know bump all with dr dre saying because i'm thinking you know i didn't even know he actually abused another lady i think her name was d barnes it was um she was supposedly if you watch after the movie um, premiered, they did like a behind the scenes type thing and talked about what was going on and then some other stuff. But he had got into it with this lady. All she know was she was going to go go shoot some pool with um, Tupac. And next thing she know, he grabbed her from the back and just started beating on her. And I'm like, okay. And then she thought he was, you know, if she went to the woman's restroom, she just knew he wasn't going to take his black buddy now. what he do? Go in there and be up some So, I, I and he trying to deny that he didn't do this to Michelle. Like, uh-uh, no, boo. You, uh-uh. But, um, back to you, Michelle. I'm going to pray for you, baby girl. I really enjoyed the movie. Once again, thanks for sharing um, your truth with us. Because there's a lot of women out there that go that's going through the same thing you went through and still going, thinking it's okay. Ladies, it is not okay for a man to hit you. Vice versa. If you're in an abusive relationship with a female, it is not okay for somebody to put their hands on you aggressively. You know, not you know just hugging and stuff, but aggressively with rage and anger. It is not okay. Oh. Okay, all right. Just want to say that. But overall, like I said, the movie excellent, excellent. But Dr. Dre, oh, I'm about to go in on that ass. I am about to go in. <clears throat> Let me just go ahead and get into it. So we, she starts the story off with her just basically doing a little narr uh, narrative of her and how she grew up in Compton and stuff like that start off as a little girl she's seeing what's going on um walking down the street with her uh what she call her mimi Mima, something like that walking down the street seeing what's all going out in the streets people getting locked up gang members got one over here domestic violence going on she was basically saying it's not gonna be me and her mom uh grandma was like you don't know but if it is stick with it and i'm like what what kind of advice is you getting Maybe you had went through that grandma, but no, you don't, mm -mm. you need to try to end the cycle because it's not okay. But she told us up front, she got this type of mindset from what she learned from her mama and her grandma. So we can't really blame her for that. But, um, so we just, a lot of this stuff on the past, I'm just going to get to like the points where I really gonna get in that ass on dr dre and you know i ain't really ain't gonna see, say too much on suge knight because we all know what type of man suge knight is i mean that was evident 
So when she, I don't know why she was trying to get feisty with him, but we gonna get to that later. But yeah, so she's in um she's at her job and she's just singing or whatever. And this man by the name Alonzo, he comes. He's part of this group with Dr. Dre as well as he um owns his I guess own record label or he's part uh owns the group. I don't know, but he was looking for talent because the person he had working with the boys. She left him. So he needed somebody else. So she he heard a voice and then she started talking. He was like, dang, I didn't expect to hear that <laughs> the way you talk. It's definitely not how the way you sing. And she was like, uh, does anybody ever talk the way they sing and stuff like that? He was like, Well look, I like your voice. I might I need you to come out with some of my homies who got this song. I really would love for you to be on it. With this track, and I really would love for you to be on it. Come through, and she was like, "Okay, you know, and her little um cute voice." To me, it's cute. It might be annoying to some people, but I just like it because it's just unique. You know, it's even though it's like squeaky little like uh mousy type thing. So we got the boys waiting. Like, dang, where she at, Lonzo? It's been two hours. Blah blah blah. And he's saying she gonna get here. She she getting off work. And somebody, I think it was the one who was playing Dr. Dre. Did she work on Mars or something like that? Like, boy, if you don't sit your ass down somewhere, damn. Like, this movie, it it pissed me off. It was very depressing at times. I almost teared up at the end. I mean, it was everything. But, Dr. Oof. Child, 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 child. But, um, she finally gets there. And she opened up her mouth, and they, of course, they're laughing at her. Like, are you serious, Lonzo? This is who, this is who you bring us, and you think she can sing with that type of the way she can talk? And he was like, "Look, just listen to her, okay, dang." So he brought over a little notebook and like, "Look, I want you to sing this. It's called a song called Turn On the Lights or Turn Off the Lights or something like that." And she was like, "Oh, okay, you know." And then Dr. Dre he had made a smart ass comment. And she was basically getting smart back with him. Like, look, you ain't going to come to me like I'm just an old Joe Blow over here. No, boo. Not going to happen. So I can leave. But she stayed. She did a thing. And everybody was like, oh, man. That's you? Really? That's you? I mean, and then Easy e he was like, do you like singing for people? And she was like, well, no, I really just sing for myself. And Lonzo, he liked it me. He told me to come out here, and I'm here. So what's up? So then Dre started liking her. Now, now his approach is different. What's your name? Oh, Miss Chalet. I like it. Can you know redo that again? And she should have known right there. He was a crazy nut from the get go. So she finished the little um her little part and she was like thanks guys I really enjoyed it and stuff like that so she was headed home of course Easy E was trying to you know spit some game to her and then here go Dr. Dre trying to interject himself oh well you know how you getting home this and that and then it came up to a factor where uh you know I can take you home or something he said like that and Easy was like that, that boy ain't got no car I'm like what the <laughs> I'm like oh Nick, you ain't got no car and you try, boy, you had to go on some. So, <laughs> so, she still went out with him. She told us wasn't her type, but as they start growing and hanging out more with each other, he grew on her. So, um, after that, uh, okay, yeah, so they start basically building a relationship with each other. He, it got to a point where he was calling her every morning at 9 o'clock a.m. clockwork. Then Easy e will come in. It's like they'll go back and forth. And so finally, she just went on ahead and picked uh, Dr. Dre. They end up getting even closer. And they got intimate and stuff like that. And her uh, grandma was trying to warn her. Like, look, I don't think he's too clean, man. Like... No, I don't know about that. So then he was trying to tell her how he's going to leave um, Lonzo and his little project he got going on. Him and Easy E going to start Ruthless Records. So, you know, that's going to be the new big thing. So she can hop on that and we can make this music. Okay. 
And I'm like, all right, you go ahead and do your thing, Miss Shelley. Like, you, you, you go make it happen or whatever. So, we got 1988 Ruthless Records. She, I mean, they just treated her like, to me, they just treated her like crap at times. Like, she making them food, bringing groceries. I'm like, what female, you know, doing? You know, she was just... To me, she was just happy being a part of a kind of like, you know, he's my brother, you know, and I'm their little sister and stuff like that. But, of course, she was dating and sleeping with the producer, man, whatever. So, then it came up to a point where he, uh, they was in the studio. He got a call, and it was from one of his baby mamas. And he was like, oh, easy, let me grab your keys. Like, that. you still ain't got your ride? Ooh. So, <laughs> he was like, look. They are about to have a baby. Oh, it's my baby. So, you know, I got to go. And she's just like, okay, go go take care of your business. Go do you. You know, and she wasn't even tripping. So, I'm like, dang, you had it good, man. She wasn't even tripping and stuff. Ugh. Ugh. Mm. Unknown specimen. That's what So, he leaves. And he like, cool, cool, cool. Okay, okay. So, I mean, next thing we know. He talking about he got another baby. Like, damn. And then when she asked him how many children do he have, he said, well, I got three. And then she calculated it up. She like, wait, you got five kids, man? Five kids, y'all. That that right there would have just took me to the, uh, mm -mm, no. One is enough. Two, you pushing it. Five, Nick, five. Five kids. Uh-uh. No. And he gonna talk about, oh, I think so. I think I might. Dang, you don't know how many kids you got? You making condoms, man. Condoms. Put them on. To prevent this. Okay? And then you ain't even worried about diseases. Like, oh. I'm just tired. I just, I can't take it. I just cannot take it. So, they get over that rough patch. She end up forgiving because she basically she know what kind of dude she got. So, and he gonna talk about some. You know, we got some real here, Miss Chalet. You know, I fly, you fly. We definitely gonna get up out of Compton. You know, it's ain't the life for us. You know, when we together, we make mad. What? No. Oh my gosh. So, um, we get to a scene where they're in the club. They doing their music and then they're talking to Jerry. And Jerry, he was working with Easy E to manage Ruthless, uh, Ruthless Records. So while they're trying to discuss business on some next business moves, we got Dr. Dre over here talking to his baby mom. And they going back and forth, I guess, about the child or whatever. He finally comes over to the table and they trying to say, like, what's up? We, we need your mind here. Business, business, not ass. A business, business, okay? So then we get from that, he driving to somebody's house. And Miss like, hold on, hold on. This not where we stay at. I mean, this ain't my house. I got work in the morning. What you doing, Dre? So he going knocking on the door. It's his baby mama crib. Who comes out? Baby mama boyfriend. And his tidy whities man. His tidy whities and they basically, who the hell are you here? Who the hell are you? So, Dr. Dre, he just went off. And, I mean, he went over there pitsy drunk. Like, you could tell he had alcohol in his system. So, they, uh, well, I would say they was fighting, but Dr. Dre was basically beating up the boyfriend. I'm like, dang, you ain't got, boy, you better wake up out that sleep you is and fight back. But, I mean, he was just beating him up. Then... Miss Chalet, she got out the car. Then the baby mama came outside. And he was like, stop, Dre, stop. And then he got up off the dude. Then he got up in the Miss, uh, Miss Chalet face. Talking about some, uh, I forgot what he said. Because it really doesn't matter. Because I would have slapped the ish out of him. I'm just saying. Because he was just being stupid as hell. Like, you, boy. And she was even saying, if you don't care about your baby, why is all of this, why are we over here? Dang, he, ooh, child, I can't. So, we back in the studio. And, um, they making this song or whatever. And 
she had did something and he was well she was singing on some and he was like well any b-i-t-c-h could do that oh so now she a b-i-t-c-h now she was just your baby your boo your girl your superstar now she uh i can't and that's another thing when when these females in this dominated male industry they just these men just think they could talk say whatever no treat treat me with respect damn it this was wrong with these uh uh dudes today the the respect level is at a low 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 it's just i mean it's just low like dang what if i was your sister what if i was your, you would talk to your sister like that you would talk to your mom you would talk to your grandma like that and some of uh y'all dudes your grandma raised you and i know she ain't raised you like that dang treat People like you want to be treated, damn it. <sighs> Digress. Okay. So then, they're going on tour. Um, basically, Jerry was telling them what's, go what's going to be going on. And, of course, easy worrying about the women. Like, what's, what what the women going to be at? You didn't mention none of your little speech about the women. He was like, well, I ain't got uh to help you with that. That's on your own, brother. So then... He uh, talks to, what's his name? He talks to, um, uh, <laughs> he talks to, um, Dr. Dre and Mich uh, Michelle. And he was about to, he was like saying, well, look, I see y'all somewhere else versus just where y'all at right now. I'm going to show y'all to a different world that y'all ain't never seen before. And they're like, what are you talking about? He was like, Michelle, you making money now. You know, you're not just singing on these little tracks or whatever. You're making money. So, we're going to put you on some more money, basically. And they like filling in. Okay, okay, okay. So, after one um, night, it just got to a point where the females, they was running after NWA. I mean, they groupies was real lit back then. I mean, goodness. And Paul Michelle, she was just in the middle of it. And Jerry had to come get her, like, out the little cone and talking about something. I don't think this going to be too good for y'all relationship. Because the women was just left, right, center, side. I mean, they was just all over the place. So, then we got uh, Miss Shelley. They had, like, a little pool party. Girls everywhere. Suge Knight showed up. She was like, why is he even here? Why are you hanging with that thug? Because, you know, everybody know about Suge Knight. That's, that's definitely not a man to be playing with, okay? And, um, you think it could be a good life? Thing? Oh, and, uh, after the party, Michelle and, uh, what's his name? Dr. Dre, they met up with Jerry. Had a little talk. They go to, like, the little diner where they had, they, I guess you could say their first date or whatever. And he was like... Because at the time where they was, everything was good. They was loving each other, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, you think like this could be like this every day? And she like, uh, no. And he was like, yeah, yeah, you right, you right. No, I ain't no relationship perfect every day, I wish. But no, nah, people will be on different stuff. So clearly you. So we get back into the studio. The boys, they like, look, we need some new music, man. We need some. Because this ish right here ain't popping. So Easy E go to Michelle A. Like Michelle, you you know you doing music. You want to work on something? You want to get on the track? Instead of her being her own woman, yes, I do. I've been waiting for this chance for a long time. She go to Dre. Is it okay? He was like, if you want to do it, baby, do it. You damn right, I'm gonna do it. I don't need your permission, but you know that mentality she done grew up with. So that was just a, like, yeah, I do it, I do it. So Easy e was like, look, I'm going to give you a couple of days to get your ish together. Come back to me and we'll work with you and we'll make it do what it do. And she was like, yeah, okay. So then she get up. They were like, hold up, hold up. Where the food at, though? Who going to make our food? Uh, she, You going to make your own that? You're grown. You see? And that's another thing. Us women, we be making these men lazy as hell. Like, they can't do a damn thing. No, you can get up. You can make your own damn dinner. Yes, she made it for a, a good couple of, uh, what is it, nights and stuff for y'all. But she trying to get her career on, uh, 
to come up, okay? So you need to get up off your butts and get in that kitchen or wherever and make you some of your damn selves. So, whew, let me digress. Because I tell you, this movie, it had me everywhere, y'all. It had me everywhere. So she go home that she got with uh, Dr. Dre. They got them a little place together. And she, you know, she trying to figure out how she going to put, uh, what is it? How she going to put this lyric with this melody you know stuff like how writers gotta do or whatever and so while she um doing that she happened to notice some draws are in the sofa hmm and she know it's not her draws her, her panties so she's like okay bet i got some for that so dr dre of course probably creeping it was probably late at night so he come in at night, talking about some what a dinner at, and she said, "Oh, it's in the stove." He getting all excited. Yes, he smelled the pot. Like I know this gonna be something good. Come find out, it is a meal for him, but it's also burnt draws that she found in the sofa as well. So you eat that, and you eat the draws that you cheated on me with. How you like the apples? So we back in the studio. She uh comes with this song. Basically, it's a diss song towards <laughs> Dr. Dre. I mean, he really felt it because he was in his feelings. He was throwing back alcohol, looked like Henny. I mean, he was really pissed. So, but everybody else was feeling the song. I know I was. I was like, shoot, do, 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 do. you know, I was all up in there. And everybody was like well dang she getting on you bro you <laughs> and you know they're laughing you know men don't they don't handle that too well so he what he do oh what is it she get she comes out the booth everybody you know dap my hub saying good job you did good that's that's really about to be something you know it's gonna hit the streets real heavy she gonna say how you like it dre and he gonna blow smoke in her face. I was like, oh, that. that. That just couldn't have been me. How, she was just asking a simple question. You gonna blow smoke in the baby girl face. Mm, okay. Alright. So, <laughs> he gets a call and they end up leaving. And he gonna tell Jerry, you take her home. Nigga, I roll with you, so you taking me home. He don't gotta take me nowhere. You take me home before you gotta go wherever you need to go. Probably a booty call, but I ain't even gonna get into that. Now this, this right here, is where I really lost my marbles. So she in the bed. She chilling, waiting on him, of course. He come in, once again, pissy drunk. And he get on top of her, you know, she thinking she gonna get some good loving or whatever or, you know, a kiss. She was like, I was worried about you and BAM! He went for the, the hit. I was like, whoa! Now, I know they said it was gonna be some uh, uh, physical abuse in here, but that I was not expecting that. Not only did he hit her once, he did like a one, two, three, four combo. He did BAM! 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 I said, hold up. <laughs> Hell to the mother freaking no. Did I just see that? And I mean, then he had a nerve to roll over. And he gonna start crying. What in... What? Are you kidding me? I would have... Mm -mm. First hit would have been it. Second hit, okay. Once I see he, he was laid out, passed out. A lamp would have hit his his head. Well, he would have been knocked unconscious. Because how dare you probably was sleeping around. Come in here with your stanky ass. Get up on top of me. And hit me. Have you lost your ever loving mind? I think you have. And I think I'm going to need to check it back into reality. Oh. Mm -mm. Couldn't have been. Mm. Lord, have mercy. <sighs> Lord was with you. Lord was with you. And then what really made it so bad. She was like. I should have left. When I had one good eye left. I was like. It, it, too, too much. Too, uh, too much. 
But she said she was going to stay with him. Because what her uh, Mima said was, a man loves you. If he hurts you, he loves you. And that's the totally opposite. No, baby girl. That, no. Mm-mm. We're just going to get off that for I, I get more mad. So, and she made a good point. She said rap was about rage, not beauty. And it, I, I'm really, I, cause it's just, that, that was so uncalled for. Like what was really going on with you, Dr. Dre, that you had to put your, and to me, when a man put his hands on a lady, especially if she didn't even evoke it or, you know, put her hands on you. You a punk because how dare you put your hands on a lady knowing doggone well a man can overpower a lady. You a punk and I said it. Punk. Okay, so then cause it's like and then <laughs> when he was messing with Val, she was about his height. She mushed him and I didn't see him lay a finger on her, but who knows what he probably did with her behind closed doors. But he didn't put no uh, no hands on her. So pick on somebody your own size, okay? And you you same as you a dude, not no female. The hell wrong. <sighs> okay. So after that incident, they take us to where she's trying to powder her face, basically to co cover up the bruises. Baby girl, we light skin, so it's only too much you can cover up. Well, I think I'm like lighter than her, but she light. So she coming in the studio, everybody just looking at her like, damn, Dre did that to her? Yes, mm-hmm, just like a walk of shame, just walking. So, and he gonna, what he gonna say? He gonna talk about some, uh, you late. Oh, maybe because you just got done beating me up, so I had to refresh myself. So then... It was this song, and I liked it. My mom liked it, and she told me she's definitely not going to listen to that song no more, especially after she see what Miss Shelley had to go through. And I don't blame her. I do not blame her because what he, what he put her through was just too much for any woman. So she had to sing something in my heart. She go in the booth, and you can already see she like trembling, and she's just not comfortable. So, she tried to, you know, sing a little some some, And, basically, it wasn't to his liking. And she was telling him she can't do it. And he was like, I sent you this track a week ago. And you telling me you can't sing this? Shh. Girl, you better sing that thing. I, uh, sing this song. If I have to come in there and make you feel what I'm feeling. So, I'm like, boy, if... Ooh, Lord. And the thing that really got me... You had men back there witnessing this why nobody could check dr dre be like hey look ain't cool i don't care if he was the devil himself he needs to get checked okay he really needs to get checked but they was just sitting there just looking like damn that's that's freaked up but you ain't gonna say to damn but the only person who really stood up for her and God rest his soul was Easy E. He was like, hey man, he didn't check her right then. But when it got to the uh that song she did with Dr. Dre, I think it's it's I can't what song? Nasty or nasty or something like that. That song. <laughs> he hit on her again. I'm like, uh-uh. Somebody need to clock this fool right there. Like he really thinking he can run ish and he don't run it that okay <laughs> let me get let me get a home but let me get back to that so she basically ended up she couldn't do it so he get in the booth and it, it to me it just reminded me of tina turner aka anime and ike when she was in there and she had basically was talking back to him saying i think she was kind of the same effect as uh what they had going on in this scene and he came in there he jacked up too and then slapped her around and then she had to sing that ish after all that. Same thing with Miss Shelley. He told my son, if you don't sing this like I want you to sing this, I'm going to make you feel it when we get in the car. I'm like, oh, okay. So she she do what she have to do to get through that. 
Once again, nobody said anything. They look in the other way when they should have came to her offense and checked that fool. But we're going to get off that. So then, like I said, we get to the nasty video or the nasty some video. Shoot. She complained about her hair. She's saying that she's going to be dancing and it's going to sweat out. And I think she probably just got like a perm or something. True. Okay. She's talking about she need a weed. He's like, no, you don't need a weed. You need to do what I tell you to do and do it right. And that's how it's going to be. And she was, they were going back and forth. And then she was like, what the hell you know about a, uh about hair? And then he just jacked her up again. He was like, who the hell are you talking to like that? I was like, oh my gosh. This is just too much. So we finally get her just out there so she could do this scene where she dancing with two background dancers and dr e dr easy easy he was like looking like mm -mm, mm -mm, cut 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 he was like miss chanel you okay he was, she was like no nah, man dre got me wearing this turtleneck and this high ass jacket and this and that and i'm like oh my gosh why is she, uh, so he come over there like the big bad wolf what you say girl i could you Girl, bring your ass. And then took her in the back, slapped her around. She coming back out. He, uh, easy. Like, where the hell is Michelle? Like, she coming. She got. I'm like, oh my gosh. This was, uh, I can't. So, this is the time that I'm so glad somebody stood up for her. Easy E had to go check him. Like, man, don't do her like that. She a sweet girl. Don't be acting like that towards her. And so, Dr. Drake and his feelings freak you, Easy. Blah, blah, blah. Jerry handle that. He um go to Michelle like, hey Michelle, like, how much of this you gonna take? I'm disrespecting you like that. She was like, look, look, let's just do the video, just to do the video. She didn't want to hear nothing else. It's fine, it's fine. Just, just get me out there. Somebody play the freaking song. Oh, and I'm like, oh my goodness, they got this lady just going haywire. So, um. She in the we get to the scene where she in the bathtub. I guess she trying to soak her wounds, trying to be one with herself. She gets a phone call. It's easy. Basically, he's saying, "Look, Dre on his way home. He lit. He tipsy. He damn near just drunk. Okay, I need you to go ahead and get out of there, get out the house." Michelle, like, you know, she ain't really saying too much. And he's like, "Michelle, you hear me?" She's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. "Put the phone down." She was like, freak that. I ain't going nowhere. I'm just going to self-medicate myself. I'm be popping these pills, drinking this alcohol. And when he hit me, I'm really not going to feel nothing at that point in time. I'm probably feel it later on, but at that time, I'm not. So, he get home, of course. Yeah, he hit her. So, then we get to, um, what is it? They're performing. And she ends up performing. And she gets off the stage. And... She sees uh, her grandma. She noticed that she's still getting beat on. And she, of course she was like, you know, what's going on? But then she could tell her, you still stick in there. You know, just think of it as, um, what she say? A job that pays you well. No! When you put me in harm's way, uh-uh. That ain't no job I want to be working or occupying, okay? But once again, this mentality within that family for the ladies is that cycle needs to be broken especially now that she got her uh well i already know it's not gonna happen because it should night daughter so it did mm -mm. <laughs> don't even try it. so then um after she talked to her mom jerry comes over there basically discussing uh discussing discussing um business and he was telling her look you done sold 500,000 copies. A.K. you go, baby. You go. You done hit go in the record world. Okay. And she was like, you know, being ecstatic about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was just saying, how would you like to open up for MC Hammer? And she was like, oh my gosh, that would be great. You know, I got to talk to Dre. He like, hold up. This ain't got nothing to do with Dre. Dre is going to be on his own tour. This is about you, Miss Shelley. So, she's like, still, but... Who's going to cook? Who's going to clean? I'm like, God damn, Miss Shalay. Worry about yourself. You. Don't be worried about that no good dude. He not. Because he probably. I know for damn sure he ain't worrying about you right about now. And clearly when she got home from the tour. He weren't. But. So. Um, <laughs> mm -mm. 
So she ends up going on the tour with uh, MC Hammer. She having a good time. You know, she's enjoying this time away from getting her butt whooped. And Dre being pissy drunk all the time and taking his anger out on her. And so she gets home from a dinner that she had with the, um her uh peoples from the tour and stuff like that. And this one particular dude she, you know, she was really interacting with, I guess Dre her wind of it and he just had to come make a surprise pop up like he doing something she opened the door she turned the light he's sitting on the bed talking about some who you freaking that, that's how you greet me first you don't even do a proper greet me like hello ring the doorbell i mean or knock on the door and say hey baby i'm here no you appearing in the dark now, what the hell you you have no you won't I should backslap you. So he get up trying to basically talk first talk rude to her, then try to talk uh dirty nasty to her. Talking about some oh you getting um big, you know, but you still cute though, you still cute. And I'm thinking he was referring because when he said it he had hit her stomach. Like, you know, I guess he knew she was pregnant or whatever. Couldn't find out she pregnant. She talking about she can't have no baby. She is not sane right about now. She can't even handle herself. Okay, let alone bring a child in this world with this crazy mofo out here wanting to hit people just for no apparent reason. Okay, so he come in on a conversation that she having with Jerry, and he like, what the deal is? What y'all talking about? I'm having a problem with what? So she goes and tell him, look, I'm pregnant. He's like, oh, okay, good, good. And Jerry and her are like, no, 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 it's not good. You know, I'm start just starting my career. I'm doing my music. You know, I'm trying to live my dream. And them was definitely not the words she wanted here, cause she was talking about basically, you know, aborting the child. So he told Jerry to take his butt on out so she could talk. And he like, no, I'm not leaving you with him. No, no. And he was like, you not what? And so, Miss Chalet was like, uh-uh, Jerry, just go. Just please just go. So, he told Miss Chalet, I'm going to be right outside the door, okay? Scream, and I'll be here, okay? So, he going to have the nerve to say, man, if you wasn't pregnant, I'll kick your ass. Okay. I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, get off that. She ended up having a baby. The baby named Marcel. He buys them a new house, but it's really his house. Because he the one who want to throw parties and ish. So they throw a party and should not come to that. Blah, blah, blah. I, I, I can't. So then we get to a scene where um, Ice Cube, he come over there basically confronting uh dr dre saying look jerry they stealing money from us man i ain't got paid for my music jerry and easy e they the one who making the big benjamins where is my cut man and so uh dr dre like no nah, man ain't. of course this was the same type of uh stuff that was going on in their movie straight out of compton so she you know she had it right or whatever and he was like look Freak this. Freak NWA. I'm about to do my own thing. So he walk out. He getting mad. She, you know, said a couple of words. And then he had the nerve to put his hand up like he was going to slap her. But then I guess he realized she had a baby. His baby that he can't even call his. Oh, that's our child. He can't even say Marcel. He done forgot the baby damn name. I'm like, uh-uh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So... I was like, that, whew, it see so many strikes, so many strikes, but Lord had his hands on you, Michelle. He he really did. Because, woohoo, did it, mm -mm. No, not, not at all. So, um, so he ended up calling Jerry. He like, where my money at? Because if I don't get my money in this amount of time, you know what's going to happen. And I guess Jerry was like, well, did you check your mailbox? He gonna say, man, ain't no um, mail done came in this address, blah, blah, blah. I'm ha Hell, we don't even got no mailbox. While he doing all that, Michelle actually went to the mailbox. They had like a stack about this high. 
come find out he had a bunch of checks in there. And she was like, are you going to go apologize, Jerry? Uh, no. I'm like that. Boy, I can't. Mm -mm. He done messed up my damn notes. I don't even know. Back in the studio now. Um, we're going to fix dinner. Okay. So then, uh, I'm like I said, I'm going to skip through some stuff. Really, it, basically, we're just going to keep it like this because it's just kind of like an ongoing story. She had this party. Like, he beat her again. He beat her a couple more times. But she had this party. I don't know. I think somebody was graduating. And she decides to just be loose. Not like sleeping with people. Just be on some drugs. You know, just so she don't feel nothing. Somebody come shoot up shoot up the world try to shoot up the party and that was just enough for her because you just put not only did you put her in danger you put the baby boy in danger and that's just something can't go down it can't go down like that so she go to her grandma house drop Marcel off she go to the studio with Dr. Dre at. Dr. Dre is producing this artist they got and we got Suge Knight on the other side of him she like look Dre I got to get better. I need to get sober. Blah, blah, blah. He was like, man, take an aspirin or something. That always helps. Blah, blah. She ain't trying to hear that, man. So, he doing his thing. Saying what he had to say. Of course, it was very disrespectful. Then he gonna, like, pick her up. Sit her down. Tell her some, get yourself together. Acting like all we did. Just get out. Just, just get out. So, here comes Suge Knight. Hero. Hero, man. He's saying, look, if you really trying to get yourself straight... I can put you in rehab. Ain't no thing but chicken wine, okay? All you gotta do is get your stuff and go on ahead and check yourself in. Don't tell nobody where you're going. Just go. Everything be straight. Baby boy will be straight. And she just looking like, okay. Alright. Cool. That's what we're gonna do. Oh, I, I left out of the park though. Let me go. Let me rewind. Because it's what really also got me very heated. So, they was out joyriding. I think it was after, like, her birthday party. He, they was out joyriding. Um, they end up stopping. He got into it with some dudes off the street. And she was like, oh, sh they about to start shooting. Let me just put my foot on gas. They get home. And he get on the phone. He get off the phone. Then he pull out this gun. And she was like, why are you towing this gun? Suge Knight said, oh, so we're listening to what Suge Knight is saying. And blah, blah, blah. Then it get to a point where it was, he just got tired, I guess, hearing her talk. So, he shoots the gun. I'm like, damn. But the girl, back, Miss Chalet, she, she was gone. She she was gone. She wasn't having that. I mean, she ducked off so quick. I was like, God. Whoop. And then she, he hit the baby. And he going to tell my son, man, come get this baby. What kind of mother are you? Nigga, what kind of father are you to be put? <laughs> Let's not talk about parenting here. You pulled a gun out on his mama. Like, nigga, boy. Mm -mm. Yeah, so I had I had just to talk about that. Because he had some nerve to say, what kind of mother is she? No, what kind of father are you that will pull out a weapon on his mom? Then... You hear the baby boy cry. Why don't you go get the baby boy? Put Be a parent. And stop freaking everything that walk out here. And making babies. Take care of them. But I bet you take care of them now. <sighs> Child, I can't. So back to the rehab. So she get checked in the rehab. She get a mind right mentally. Emotionally. She good. She get out. She go see Suge Knight. She happen to run across Tupac. Tupac, rest in peace, man. Um, one of my favorite rappers of all time. To me, he's a lyricist. You know, you know how to put some words together, y'all. Make y'all think. Make y'all think. Um, but yeah. So she do that. Then she go see her son with grandma. They tell her that the grandma said, "Dang, I'm sorry, Miss Shelley. Don't ever let that man put his hand on you again." Cause that wasn't right. That's what I told you was definitely not right about a man. 
So she was like, I know, but I ain't going back to Drake. Well, you don't need to because he engaged. What? He engaged? Oh, okay. Well, that's him. The only thing that I really appreciate him giving me is that uh, little boy right there. That's all I... I'm like, you go, girl. You you better tell him. So, she ends up getting a place. And get, guess who at the door stop? Guess who is at the door? His ass. So, he basically comes over there. Tell me some, mm, you look good, you know. But a lot of things changed. You know, I left death row. I got my own record label now. Aftermath, you know, Tupac, he trying to get up out of death row. He trying to come over there with us. Oh, it's about to be, and I want you to come. I want it to be like old times. Whoa, back it up. You get a little too close. Don't you have a wife? Okay. Uh, so he gonna say some, um, okay. Then he gonna get even closer, and then he end up kissing her. Like, we back as, uh, zero like we we when we first started no but you got you have a wife you engaged or married whatever you have somebody else go put your lips on them okay but she ends up i guess reminiscing the good because she said he had some good sex so she had yeah i guess had to get that little lip action one more good time so but then she realized uh uh she slapped him he Gets angry, of course, and he gonna tell me some who you. Here we go with this. Oh, you should not really. And I'm like, it don't matter. It ain't yours no more. So it doesn't matter, okay? But I'm gonna need for you to turn around and go out that door. So he in his feelings now, and she told him to leave. Because she will call a popo. It's not like Compton, where it'll take an hour almost for them to get there. They will get there just like that. Try her if you want to. So he was like, okay. You're making a big mistake. And her response to that was, I was like, you go, Miss Shalay. And she was like, after that, he was gone. She was set free. So basically, she got with Suge Knight. That was kind of a worse mistake, but at the time, that was um her basically her savior right about there i mean he was her angel in disguise she, from one mess she jumped in jumped out of to another and i'm telling you that one scene when um basically how he had it once he got locked up she was over everything because he trusted her Every month she got thirty grand. Okay, thirty. Do you know what I can do with thirty grand? Thirty grand every month. She basically was on house arrest herself because she really couldn't do nothing. She couldn't even go see her grandma. Okay, does so that mean she couldn't even go see her son? So when he did get out, she was basically worrying him about when is he gonna get her album put together, you know, stuff like that. And he like, you worried about that? And all this other stuff I done did for you. Oh my goodness. I was like, Miss Shalai, why? Why did you do that? He just basically pimp slapped her. And I mean, she flew out the focus of the camera, y'all. I mean, I was like, oh my gosh. Next thing I know, she out on the gurney with this little head wrap. I'm like, damn. I was about to say, Snoop. damn, shit, what you do to the lady? So, while um she was on the gurney, he was telling the uh ambulance the ET people was like, Look, I need a minute. They was like, <laughs> Go ahead, do what you gotta do, player. So he was like, Look, I told him we were playing football. I made a pass and it just went wrong. Okay? I was playing football. Okay. Don't get it um, don't get it incorrect. I was playing we were playing football, okay? And she was like, mm hmm, playing football. So <laughs> later, we find out she got pregnant. And that was basically what, another gift from God. Because, <laughs> I mean, she she was really in the middle of some ish with him, for real. So, toward the end, she found out that the marriage was fake. Because he basically wanted to get a get out of jail free card type thing. And she found out a whole lot of stuff. And she basically confronted him like, you dirty son of a gun, you. 
You really played me to the left, to the back, to the right, to the front. But you know what? Try me again and I'll let it all hang out. And he was like, oh, you know what happens when people threaten me? She was like, you think I'm scared of some bullets, man? Try me. And then toward the end, she was talking to her baby girl. Like, don't let no man put his hands on you. You know, stand your own truth. Be your own person. No right from wrong because when a man put his hands on you, he do not love you. Okay, he do not. And then she had her little song. She had the end and I almost teared up. I was like, oh, God. But like I said, overall, excellent, excellent depiction of um, Michelle life as she sent giving to us in her truth and dr dre <coughs> unknown specimen you're punk and that's all i got to say y'all tell me what y'all thought about um this movie surviving compton with dr dre and suge knight and i'll see you on the next review peace